Salutations, America. Yes, salutations. I am Rob Chapman. I am Dave. We woke up this morning in our flat in America where we now live sometimes. Yes. And um, had a swift coffee. And I was talking to Dave the night before about G and L and saying, you know what, G and L, what an amazing guitar brand that I've not really tried much before. <laughs> So uh, I was asking Rob lots of questions, uh, getting a bit of backstory, yes. and I discovered that Rob's quite knowledgeable about well, this topic. The thing is, I'm a big, <laughs> I enjoy history and sort of ancestry and etymology, and I like to find out where things come from. And I have a lot of respect for the founding fathers and pioneers of tone in the guitar industry, especially Clarence Leonidas Fender. Um, because although Adolf Rickenbacker invented really, the electric guitar with the frying pan. I think if you look at good old Clarence Leonidas Fender from Anaheim, that dude probably developed more tech that became what we use today. I mean, it's just the industry standard, isn't it? Yeah, well, he's definitely one of the dudes. I mean, you know, sitting beside, you know, everyone else, but he is, he really did some things that he are did. kind of groundbreaking. And you know, there's a tiny Mediterranean island below Sicily called Malta. And in Malta, they have a saying, which is, for clita to atil burma. Mind blown. And that means on three legs, the cooking pot can stand and cook some tone. And Leo knew this. It literally means tone, yeah? Leo knew this <laughs> because once he'd uh, developed Fender, he was like, you know what? That's just one leg of the cooking pot. I need another two. So then he went and just developed, oh, I don't know, another small brand called Music Man. <laughs> then he went, you know what? Now I've done it twice. Why not have three? Because everything comes in threes and three is better. Yes. So he and his buddy George Fullerton and Dale Hyatt, who's the unsung hero of this operation, got together and created g &L guitars. Let me tell you about Dale Hyatt. Do that. Tell me about him. He's the unsung hero of GNL Guitars. <laughs> he was the marketing guy, very highly educated. Mm -hmm. He was a tail gunner. He was the guy people shot at in the back of an airplane. <laughs> Picture the guy kitted out in the back of an airplane, flying 25 missions, firing at the enemy like this. <laughs> That's probably how he looked, exactly. He got shot down. Brilliant. Over France, great food. And he still made it back to safety. Mind blown. And then formed GNL Guitars with George and Leo. That is incredible. I just really enjoy telling that story because not a lot of people know that. No. Is called GNL versus Fender because it's a great kind of clickbaity debating title. People are going to comment, and you know, Fender's better than GNL, GNL's better than Fender. My personal point of view is more of a question than a point of view, which is is GNL Fender but with more experience? That'd be an interesting thing to try and find out. It's more of a question I'm posing. Pose. To the you know, what's, what's going to give that away? How, how, do, you, how do you quantify 
experience in a product. Well, I suppose you look at things that have developed and changed that have been implemented into GNL that weren't okay. originally part of the vendor remit. But then, but then again, sometimes an artisan's first initial artistic concept are the best, and you, you've got to say, Fender. I mean, it's Fender. It's one of the best guitar brands on earth. Yeah, you cannot get better. I mean, than a you, telly. Don't, you don't have to be a musician or even like music to know what Fender is. No, that's that's got to be something. Yes, that's absolutely true. It's one of the brands. Like you go, Marshall Gibson Fender, Jane. Gooding from 10 The Street, Liverpool, who works at the news agents. If you go, if you had a Fender, she'd go, yeah. Yeah, exactly. She doesn't play guitar. She There's doesn't got to be a reason for that. <laughs> so, uh... so yeah, we woke up this morning and thought, you know what, why don't we try a GNL and a Fender and just compare the two and just kind of see where it all sits and also give Dave the opportunity to try a GNL for the first time. I have played them before. We have them in the UK, but I've not really spent a lot of time with GNL. I'd no. like to. And here at Riff City, there is quite a selection. There is. And also, this is a bit of a special one because this is the first GNL that Riff City Guitar ever purchased. Riff, uh, Riff? Oh my God. I think I've just come up with a nickname for Joe. <laughs> Can we call Joe Riff from now on? Joe saw this. Uncle Riff. Uncle Riff. <laughs> I'm gonna call Uncle him, Riff. I'm going to call him Uncle Riff. Uncle now. Riff walked in and saw this, saw this guitar and went, I'm having that and we're going to start selling g &L. And I don't blame him. It's absolutely stunning. It is a masterpiece of experience in design with an incredible couple of guys, originally radio engineers. Radio who, engineers? Yeah. Um, Radio was a huge deal yeah, back well, in the yeah, you know, 50s, 40s, 50s, 60s. Still is, in a way, just not as much. Um, this is the GNL. I'm reading a bit of paper on the floor. If it doesn't look professional, I'm really sorry, but I just, it helps. This is the GNL USA Legacy Orange Flake. Legacy is what GNL are calling the Strat. The, the sort of S type. Yeah, S type. Yeah. I'm not going to bother. A lot of people will be like, you can't say the word Fender, you can't say the word. Strat. Let's just keep it real. Yeah. This okay. is a legacy. That's a strap. It's just different names for the similar shape. These are both made from alder, alder, alder wood. Um, the G and L has a bone nut. I don't know which animal, but I do know it's bone. Um, Alnico five single coils. These are the fourth generation noiseless single coils. Uh, obviously, we've got a Fender American Elite. You can see that because there's a giant sticker here that tells you it's an Elite, just in case you weren't entirely sure. Uh, yeah, both Alder. Compound radius neck, not a compound radius neck. This is compound radius board and the neck does a compound thing too, which is kind of interesting. That, that's cool. What's the, what's the little button do you hear? That's, I'm glad you asked that, Dave, <laughs> because I would have forgotten to mention that it's got S switching. I think pretty much everybody here will know what S switching is. It helps you to configure the pickups in different ways and essentially gives you kind of a humbucking tone if you need it. Right. Which is really fun. So you can fatten it up. You can fatten it up, which incidentally is something that Dave is doing right now. A, in America, with the food. <laughs> yeah. Because I've never seen Dave eat quite so much nourishment in my entire life. <clears throat> but also because Dave discovered this morning that although this beautiful PlayStation behind him it's from a brand that doesn't care about guitar players. <laughs> it seems to sound great with a guitar. Yeah. So, I mean, obviously, we're set up to kind of do the usual sort of bass and guitar, because I'm a bass player. Um, well, and rather than getting a whole other guitar amp set up, originally I was just going to hold this, but curiosity got the better of me, and I plugged it into the Dark Glass Microtubes 900 and was surprised to find that it actually sounds pretty darn good. It sounds like this. Says Dave, who's not a guitar player. But Dave actually plays drums, bass, and guitar, and can record and engineer. So he's a one-man band, outfit, production studio individual. Yeah, but you know the saying, jack of all trades, master of none. Right. Or jack of all trades, master of all. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's something Uncle Riff probably says all the time. Yeah, I reckon so.
Houston tones on the GNL. I've got to say, I really love the feel. I like the little twist to the headstock. I think it's a cool thing. I found out also that for a really affordable price, you can spec a GNL and they'll make it in six weeks for you. You can even pick the kind of headstock logo you want, which is really kind of innovative. Mm. Finished pickups, the whole thing, the whole caboose, so as I, I think people say. I'm noticing that the bridge is quite different. It's a completely different kind of bridge. It's fulcrumed upon two points. Um, I don't know much more of the spec. So being it hinging on the two points, does that help stability? Or well, obviously, that... traditionally, the uh, tremolo bridge from Fender was on multiple screws. But what a lot of people did, actually, including myself, was Just they, would, they would only end up using a couple of them. And I think he just went, well, let's just do that anyway. But this guitar has the same kind of... Oh, so it does? It does, yeah. See, people developed and learnt and changed. That's and cool. Yeah. So there you go. That's got a nice looking bridge as well. It is a nice looking bridge. Which looks better, internet? They don't care. They don't care. They don't I, didn't, care. I didn't hear a thing then. No, I didn't hear anything either. I don't even know what we're doing here. <laughs> Should we just go? <laughs> just, you know, get another coffee. Actually, Uncle River's getting us a coffee right now from the establishment across the road. Let's start with some tones from the GNL Legacy. <laughs> Right down back here with this. <laughs> Step it up, what? It's all creamy. I was enjoying fingering that bridge. That sounds GNL great. Yeah, sounds that great. sounds really, really, really nice. Really nice. Jesus, or it's the Mythos Mjolnir. You love that you, thing. Which is uh, the best pedal that the world ever made. And um, it does this to it. I missed that note, Dave, but what Did I'm going to do is leave it in the video so that the comment bus section... bus just went straight past you there. Yeah. <laughs> Did not stop. No. <laughs> That's what that does to it. Sounds great. It's a great guitar. For me at the moment, um, although it's been set up by the fantastic Nick, what do we call it, Eagle Slave? Yeah, Eagle Slave. We call him Eagle Slave. He's got a surname that sounds like Eagle Slave, but it's not. Uh, Nick is an incredible guitar player that works here and also sets up the guitars. And he set this up to almost utter perfection. But I like a little bit of a higher action. That's fine. Oh, really? I'll let Eagle Slave know. Probably because I confused him by asking for a lower action. <clears throat> Which confuses me because you always want a high action, Dave. Oh, I always end up with a high action. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'll tell you, you what want, we you should do. This one? Let's swap over. Dave, why didn't you unconnect? That, that was great. <laughs> it was like, <laughs> <laughs> one moment. <laughs> why didn't you rather I want to get to the I want to get to the point where we can throw the guitar and hold the jack cable. And just let it... And just, yeah, we can both <clears throat> do it at the same time. I, think I saw a movie like that once. That'd be great. <laughs> why didn't you rather unconventionally play that GNR Legacy through the bass end?
That sounds great. What's that pedal? Which one? Any of them. Uh, what you can't see is the... It's interesting because obviously an S-type through a bass amp is one of the most classic guitar tones on earth. You look at the bassman and strats and tellies and things. That's yeah. true. And so you can't see why. This is Because I guess, because originally the single call was kind of used a lot because of tape. Obviously everything used to get recorded to tape, right? Yeah. And because of the demagnetization and of the process of transferring audio to tape, you get a, a roll, roll off at the top. Right. So although it's completely a lossless format because it's not restricted by a bit depth in terms of digital music, there's a, there's a top end roll off just because of the nature of, of the process of recording to tape. So by having uh, single calls and that bright, you know, it's why one of the reasons that the Strat is such a, a renowned instrument is that you've got that that clarity and you don't lose it. So when it goes to, to tape, it just sounds super crystal clear, and so it sounded better than every other guitar on record. Right. So they knew that it was going to lose top end, so they engineered more top end than that you think you'd need to make sure that it balanced out in the end. Yep. Jeez. But obviously in a room, yes. it might be a bit too much. Yes. So maybe that's why they plugged it into the bass room. Probably because it's standing out there hand around. That could also be it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, how does it feel? <clears throat> yeah, it's really nice. It's very nice. It's a creamy, smooth, gliding hand machine. It's got... Has it got a chunky neck? I mean, it's not overly chunky, but it feels a bit more... What I love is if you spoonerize that, it's a monkey check. Has uh, it got a monkey check? It's got a monkey check, <laughs> slightly, but in a good way. Yeah, I mean, it's not, I mean, it's not, I'm not finding it here. I mean, obviously I'm a bass player, but I think it's, is, is it bigger than this one? It's a little bit bigger than this one. Because it felt a And also this bigger. is quite glossy and this is way more of a satin feel. Yeah. yeah. But that's all right. Let's take a listen to this one. <laughs> that's hotter for sure. Interesting is that this feels amazing. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I particularly I, I like both of them, but you know, the other thing that I've noticed is that I think so. Obviously, you've got noiseless pickups in there. Yeah. So uh, unlike on this one where you've kind of got some yeah. some buzz, but then obviously when you've got both coils out of phase, they're cancelling. So you can get some noiseless tones out of this, but you're kind of noiseless across the board with that one. Yes. Um, but. This one, to me, sounded more like the, the traditional strat that my ears are used to. That's very interesting that you would say that, because that does sound... It's going to be controversial. That sounds yeah. more like a strat. Yeah. But this feels more like a strat. Yeah. That's weird. But again, I, I guess it's, it's the noiseless pickups, because, yeah. you know... Um, I mean, both designed by Leo Fender. Yeah. So, what are you going to do? Let's try it with the S-switch in. <laughs>
mean, that's a great tone. It is. So again, it's not. It hasn't got a <coughs> humbucker sound to it, but it's no. definitely way smoother and mm. got more body. Um, but the question is, Dave, which one's better? Uh, well, that's not for. Surely that's not for us to decide. I wish it was though. Surely I wish that's I could for, just say, for these lovely people. They've got to make their. You've got to make your own minds up. I wish I could go. Yeah, this one's just better. So just buy the Fender because it's. And then I, I wish I could go. That's just better. But they're both great. I mean, basically, I think they both. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I think you nailed it. They both play really well. Yeah. But that does play more like a strap. Yes. But this does. Sounds more like a Sounds. Strat. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. George um, Fullerton doing his tings. Yeah. He knows what he's doing, that guy. Mm. Uh, yeah, that's interesting. I think we is should. That, just... Is there any other? Is there any other sort of definitive differences? Well, like, I mean, not really. I mean, so you've got. This is obviously the truss rod is adjusted at the top. That's at the bottom. Yeah. Um, but I mean, there are lots and lots of guitars in the Fonday range that are one. different specifications. Yeah. We just picked these because, to be honest with you, I really like that one, and they're a similar price. So kind of, you know, they're both around the one thousand six hundred and forty-nine or one thousand eight hundred and ninety-nine. So the Fender's a little bit more expensive. But then you've got the the name. You got the S switching too. Even though it's it should be just as valid in the name as we discussed earlier, yeah. everyone knows what Fender is. And I Leo think, Fender, you know, he's the Elon Musk of the guitar world, as he was. And, it, and it's fair enough to, to pay that little bit extra to to have that yeah that class. Yeah, man. By the way, the custom GNLs still made out in Fullerton, California. Fullerton, Fuller, Fullerton, Fullerton, California. I just know that. Good. I just I just heard the sound. You just know of, a lot of things. Uh, well, no, I'm older. <laughs> I just heard the sound. You're, you're made out of older. About 15. Same people. as these guitars. <laughs> Going, uh, hey darling, yeah, I just I need to buy another guitar. And then just take the phone away, and I just throw the phone on the floor, and then it's ching. <laughs> That's what just happened right there, because who wouldn't want a custom made guitar in six weeks from Fullerton, California? I would. I would. Yeah. Uncle Riff probably would too. I reckon he would. I've been Rob Chapman. Dave. Take it easy. <laughs>